Welcome to your next lesson on creating your guest list. In this lesson, we will go over who's paying, guest list breakdown, etiquette, what your list should include, money saving tips, guest list trends, and other tips to help you create your guest list. If you're on a tight budget, this is likely your worst nightmare. You want to invite everyone you know and a plus one, but sometimes you just don't have the funds. This part of the planning process usually causes the most tension amongst couples and families. The easiest way for you to begin your guest list is to first decide who's paying. If the bride's family is paying for the wedding, and the couple's not contributing financially, then both the bride's family and the grooms also get to invite a portion of the guest. And if the bride and groom were paying for the wedding, then they would give a small percentage of invites to their parents. But if everyone was contributing, then the parents would get a higher percentage of invites. Then if anyone wanted to invite more guests, they would pay for those extra guests. Now, the method I'm about to show you can be used by all three parties to narrow down each of their own individual lists, or on the other hand, if you're paying for your own wedding, it can help you manage a larger list with ease. Each couple will make three categories for invites. Your A list, which is your immediate family, siblings, step-siblings, parents, step-parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and your very best friends, or those whom you speak with at least once a week. Then we have your B list. This list includes extended family, meaning those people in your life who are like family to you or family members you're not particularly close with or haven't spoken to in over a year, your close friends, people who you see monthly, professional friends, like your hairdresser, nail technician, accountant, doctor, and attorney, and your C list, which contains coworkers. And this obviously means anyone you work with or do business with, and any additional friends you may not see or speak with as often as you'd like. So obviously not everyone from your A list is going to be able to make it. So when you're getting ready to send out your invites, make sure everyone on the A list was invited and if there was any additional invites available, then you would move on to the B list and choose your most important guest from there and so on. Now, if you're still having trouble narrowing down B list, you can use this quick little etiquette flowchart to help you make those choices when it comes to family and friends as well as coworkers. If it's a family member or friend and your day would not be the same without them, then yes, you invite them. If they are married or engaged, then you invite them as well as their significant other. If it's a family member or friend and you don't know their last name, then they would not receive an invite unless your parents insist on them coming. And in that case, the parents should pay for that guest and their spouse. Now, if it's your boss, you invite them along with a plus one for their spouse or significant other. If it's a coworker, and only if you couldn't imagine your day being the same without them, then you would invite them. And only if they're married or engaged would you then invite their significant other. Anyone who's in the wedding party gets a plus one and the flower girl and ring bearer, should you choose to include them, you would include their parents. And a general rule, if you haven't spoken to someone in at least two years and they are not related, don't send out an invite. Your invite list should include the guest's name and their spouse or significant other's name, and if applicable, children's names should you choose to have a child-friendly wedding, and the total number of guests invited. So here are some money-saving tips. If you're leaning on the fence about inviting children to the wedding, make it an adult 
only wedding. If you choose a smaller venue, the less occupancy you will have and the smaller your list will be forced to be. Depending on the time of year, a destination wedding would probably only be attended by your A-list. The first place to eliminate categories when you're on a tight budget is to cut out the coworkers category first. And you could always choose to have a smaller, more intimate wedding and then throw a not so over the top post wedding party to celebrate with anyone whom you couldn't invite. So now let's talk about what's trending. Smaller, more intimate weddings where more money is spent per guest on the overall experience. Only giving plus ones to those with a ring. Using smaller venues to keep your guest count low. Having kid-free weddings. And using the one year rule, only invite plus ones that have been together for a year or more. Guest list tips. If you and your fiance are paying, then you get to call the shots with the guest list. And remember, 50 guests equals 50 chairs, plates, glasses, dinnerware, favors, desserts, lunches or dinners, and drinks. If you invite 100 people, remember, you double that expense. And spend your money how you want to.